Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three and in this particular video I really want to talk about how to actually write a research paper outline in graduate school. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. This is something that we have to do on a regular basis and so I just wanted to help you out. It's really geared towards anybody that's interested in going into graduate school. Maybe you're an undergraduate student and you're thinking about writing a research paper. Maybe you're a high school student thinking about writing a research paper, well, how do you actually write a research paper? The first thing that you should be doing and thinking about is creating some sort of outline for your research paper. This is gonna be really important. And I'm gonna, if you stay until the end, uh, I'll tell you kind of the secret of what I do along the way. But I'm going to give you, in this video, I'm going to give you kind of an overview of what exactly is in a research paper and the eight sort of basic parts of a research paper that's going to be helpful for you. So the first thing is the introduction. So the introduction provides a brief background. It's usually broken into four different paragraphs. The first paragraph is what do we know in the literature? What is what is what are we looking at here? What is the thing? The second part is what do we not know about this particular thing that we're looking at? And then the third paragraph is you know, what is your research question? What are you interested in in terms of a research question? Then provide a sort of understanding of how you're actually going to address this particular research question. And then the final sort of overview or part of the introduction is going in and providing what you actually found a sort of really brief synopsis, synopsis, synopsis of what you actually found and then get into what exactly the conclusions are from these particular results. That's all it is. It's usually like four pages, maybe no more than that. And it's really short and succinct. And that is the way that you actually do an introduction. So the second thing that you have to do is have a literature review or sort of a theory background. That's probably going to be about five pages or so, maybe a little bit longer, depending on what you're doing and what you're interested in. But it's only going to be talking about the sort of relevant literatures and ideas that are relevant to your research question. So again, what you have to be thinking about is why is this so important for your research question? That is going to be a really big thing. It's really tying in this story about explaining the research question, what exactly that is. The third thing that you're going to need in this outline is a brief overview of the hypothesis that you're looking at. What are the, you know, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? There's usually anywhere from maybe one hypothesis, which is kind of rare, to probably more along the lines of two or three kind of hypothesis. And then some papers, which is getting on the rare side, they're gonna be, you know, eight, nine different hypotheses. That's getting rare because it's really hard to talk about all the different stuff that goes on with that. Um, the fourth thing that you have to do is make sure you discuss the particular methods that you're looking at. What are the methods that you're looking at? I don't know. What, what exactly are methods? Maybe it's qualitative stuff. Maybe you detail the setting that you're looking into, going into what's so relevant from that setting to the research question. Maybe it's kind of the data that you're looking at, what analysis you're looking at, all that kind of stuff. There's, I have a ton of different videos if you want to look at that kind of stuff. Um, by the way, if you go look at sort of the reciprocity YouTube videos, there's lots there. Um, the fifth thing is making sure that you have a sort of brief over overview of what you're expecting to find in the results. That is going to be really important. It's usually really, really brief and just put that in there. It's usually the first paragraph is going to be related hypothesis one. Second one is going to be related hypothesis two and third and fourth all the way down to the hypothesis. And that's it. It's really kind of basic. That part is really, really basic whether the hypothesis was supported or not. And that's it. Um, the sixth thing is make sure that you talk about the discussions and implications of your work. So you're gonna provide a sort of brief overview of what the results are, and then get into well, what does this mean for all that kind of literature that you talked about before, all those different theories, all that kind of stuff we talked about before. What does that mean? That's kind of really the important part. And it's usually you put two or three different implications of what it actually means. And then finally, you will have a conclusion uh, that was going to summarize everything. Oh, I forgot one more section. Yee! You got to make sure that you have your limitations and your limitations kind of go someplace in the dis 
discussion section, sometimes its own section, sometimes you put it right after the results. It's kind of meh. I've seen it in all sorts of different spots. It just depends on what you want to do. Uh, and then your, your uh, oh, and the limitations, you, you want to actually write down what are the limitations of all the different things that you did in the study. I guess every study has limitations. And then finally, the conclusion is you go through and you write, you know, what is a, a overview of the particular phenomenon that you're looking at. And it's usually just a paragraph. It's really short. You know, here's what I looked at. Here's what I found. And here are the implications. That's it. One little paragraph, short paragraph, and that's it. And, it, and it's really quick and easy. So what is the tip and trick that I do with writing an outline? Well, what I do is actually, because you're learning along the way and you're trying to figure things out, it's kind of like a you're just figuring things out along the way. I will write as I go and research at the same time. So I will write one particular section and have an outline with that section, write it out, you know, add some material, and then I'll keep going as I go through and reiterate and go through multiple times of these particular outlines and going through the, the work. So you might have a undocument at the end where you have, I don't know, maybe it's 40 pages, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter, depending on what you're doing. And then you gotta rejig it after that and put it into a new outline Outline once you figure out what the heck you're talking about, right? Because you don't know what you're talking about when you first go through and look at all this stuff. Now it's important to try to do this and think about what you're doing as much as you possibly can before you start doing anything like that. It's really important to sort of nail down what your theories are and your literature review and your hypothesis and all that kind of stuff. In fact, what you could even do is register the hypothesis at some domains because what, or at some, um, you know, different sort of open science websites because you want to make sure that you're not sort of changing the hypothesis too much after the fact once you get the results because that can affect and skew your results. So you want to sort of go through and iterate over time or you just want to document that process. That's, that's I, I think that's more of the important thing is making sure you're documenting what is going on and not necessarily sort of changing after the fact, but you're documenting these different sort of thought process that, processes that you have. It's a really systematic sort of logging of what's going on, right? That's really incredibly important. So that's what I wanted to point out. That's how you write a outline for a research paper in graduate school. Um, hopefully you like this sort of overview of how do you actually write a research paper in graduate school. I think it should be helpful for you. It should help you out. Um, check out some of the other videos. I have lots of stuff there if you're interested. Thank you so much. Give me a thumbs up and as well as to subscribe if you followed all the way through. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Take care and have a wonderful day.